Hey everybody, welcome back. So, today we're going to talk about the so-called CIA triad or confidentiality, integrity and availability. And this is basically one of the most widely accepted definitions of what security is to begin with. Now, every now and then you might hear about some other um, principles or pillars of security apart from these three, but there's like an industry-wide consensus that these three are, are definitely the, the three core pillars of security. Um, so please make sure to remember them and uh, we'll talk about what each one of them is about and how, um, how the three of them relate to each other. Um, just something to, to keep in mind up front. Security is about all three of them. So you cannot just have one or two in place without the, without the other, right? So um, it takes just um, violating or breaching one of them in order to impact uh, the security of, of something or, or the security of a company. So uh, just keep that in mind. So, okay. Um, Let's start with the first one, which is obviously confidentiality. Um, confidentiality, and this is just my own opinion based on my own observations, but it's um, probably the, the pillar that's easiest to understand or, or to comprehend by most people. And at the same time, it's probably the one out of the three that people are actually confusing with security itself. Um, with security per se, right? Um, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because um, w whenever we talk about security, it's actually confidentiality that people are imagining, um, at least at, at, at first. This is probably the first thing that's coming to their mind. So in order to explain uh, these three, um, let, let's use the analogy of a box. Let's say that you are, John and John has a box which contains some important paperwork. Maybe this is a um, a box that he has hidden in his uh, closet, and inside of the box is um, paperwork that he doesn't want anyone uh, to see or, or read what's written in it. So, if I am a threat actor, if I am a criminal and I broke into John's house in the middle of the night and I opened the box, then obviously the first thing that's gonna be impacted is gonna be the confidentiality. And if you think about the attacks that are happening um, on a global level, the, the cybersecurity attacks, the the bigger portion of them are actually ones that are impacting confidentiality. And the reason is because um, the most sought after information that criminals want to take is actually um, something that they need to do by impacting co the confidentiality of the information. So let's see what our um, box looks like. It's obviously purple. And the criminal has already opened it. So at this point, let's pause for a moment and, and, and let's think if we get out of the analogy for a moment, if this is your enterprise environment, if this is your company environment, what would be the best countermeasures that you could take in order to preserve the confidentiality of your, of your information? And there's obviously not no one single answer to this. Uh, there are multiple things that you could do, multiple controls that you could implement. But one of the best things you could do is to have encryption in place. And when we say encryption, we mean both encryption in transit and uh, encryption at rest. The reason is because even if all other controls fail before that, and here we're talking about defense in depth, which is um, a concept that uh, we're going to mention a lot in this course, but even if 
one or two controls failed and um, the bad guys were actually able to get a hold of the information that they uh, were after, if this information is encrypted, then you're, you're still okay. Uh, you're not okay in the sense that they were able to get it, but you're still okay in the sense that unless they have the keys to the box, or in this case, they open the box if we're back to the analogy, but unless they have the um, unless they have the encryption key in order to decrypt the information, in John's case, this would be um, the, the cipher key that was used to encrypt it, to encrypt the, 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 the documents that he had, then it, it, this information is uh, almost as good as nothing to you. So encryption is like the last resort um, that you could have in terms of um, controls that you have implemented to protect your information and to protect the confidentiality of your information because we're talking about confidentiality right now. So um, if we think about real life examples, then um, probably one of the, the easiest examples would be uh, all of the websites that you're visiting, right? Um, all of the websites that are working over HTTPS or websites that um, you are opening through establishing a TOS connection with the server on the other end, all of this traffic is encrypted. And um, this is exactly why, because you want to make sure that confidentiality is in place. You want to make sure that um, even if you capture this traffic, even if you're actually able to listen and uh, see what the packets look like, you won't be able to understand it. You won't be able to understand the information that is being sent back and forth because you won't have that uh, encryption key that it was uh, uh, encrypted with. Well, in the in the case of uh, uh, asymmetric encryption, it's it's uh, a bit more uh, complicated than just having well, one key because you have a public and a private one. But this is a whole other story that we're going to talk about uh, down the road. So for now, just make sure to remember that. Encryption is one of the best ways in which you, you can uh, you could preserve confidentiality, um, and um, just so that we're back to the uh, analogy of the box. Please remember, and I'm and I'm uh, emphasizing uh, that one, one, one more time. Please remember that all three of the uh, core principles or, or the core pillars of security are equally important, because let's imagine that you're the criminal who was able to open John's box. And the fact that John encrypted the information that he put uh, down on this piece of paper that's inside the box is, is, is fine, it's okay, it's, it's good for John because information is protected, but um, in this case, the criminal maybe got mad, maybe he said, okay, so I'm not able to read what's written on this piece of paper, but then why don't I just um, bridge the other two security principles? And he's able to do that uh, right on the spot because if he just rips this piece of paper apart, then he is basically impacting the availability of the information, right? He is um, just not able to use this piece of paper anymore because it, it, it will not be usable after that. Um, in the case of integrity, if the criminal is able to change what's written on this piece of paper, even though he won't be able to read what it says, if he's able to change just one letter, then um, maybe John will not be able to decrypt the information if, he is, if, if he's to ever uh, get a hold of this piece of paper again anyway, right? So what I'm trying to say is that, um, Protecting confidentiality is important, but it's just as important as protecting the other two um, core security pillars, because um, some of them are actually easier to impact than the others. Um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that when we get to integrity and availability, but 
Um, please remember that all three are important in order to have security in place. Okay, I'll talk to you in the next lecture. Thank you.